is probably the most exciting technological development in the world, uh, and we are finally very close. Why bother creating fusion on Earth when we have a gigantic fusion reactor in the sky that just works with zero maintenance? Today, we're here to talk about fusion, combining two particles into one. Nuclear fusion, the energy source of the sun and stars, is starting to gain traction. But what exactly is nuclear fusion? What are the most recent developments in the field? What are the open problems and where is the investment going? In the heat and gravity at the core of stars, hydrogen nuclei collide, fuse into heavier helium atoms and release energy in the process. So Mother Nature may have perfected nuclear fusion. But why do people care about this extraordinary process? And why have some hailed it as the Holy Grail of energy? You're looking for the Holy Grail. Our quest is to find the Holy Grail. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. In short, fusion has the potential to be a reliable and unlimited source of electricity, removing our energy dependency. And according to Bloomberg, has the potential to create a market worth 40 trillion, creating thousands of new jobs in the process. But as we'll see, there are also current challenges still not fully resolved, such as the technical problems associated with maintaining fusion reactions and the race to make it commercially viable before the worst effects of climate change set in. But in order to fully understand the challenges, we need to explore the recent developments first. In a year that suffered war, inflation and Prince Harry's autobiography, total fusion investment grew by 27%, with a reported $1.4 billion dollars taking investment in the fusion industry to $6 billion in total. Two companies, TAE Technologies and ENN, a Chinese-based company, hit the $200 million mark. And according to the Fusion Industry Association, the most investment for a private company has gone to the Gates and Bezos-backed Commonwealth Fusion Systems, with a reported $2 billion in funding since their founding in 2018. On the political side, John Kerry, the US's special envoy on climate change, has recently launched an international nuclear fusion plan involving 35 nations, stating that there is potential in fusion to revolutionize our world. And the European Union's Net Zero Industry Act states that Europe plans to create 40% of its clean technology deployment needs, of which fusion will play a part. So investment and policy is bubbling. But has this translated into industry progress, or is it still a 20th century fantasy? A remarkable 19 out of 30 companies surveyed by the Fusion Industry Association in 2023 believe it will be delivered to the grid by 2035. This charge is currently being led by Helion Energy, a Washington-based startup that in no uncertain terms is trying to get fusion power on the grid by 2028. But I am now here, 10 years since Helion's funding, with a commitment to deploy megawatts of fusion power on the grid by the end of this decade. Microsoft and still giant Nucor have both made agreements to use Helion's energy to power their operations when it becomes commercially viable. Having nuclear fusion on the grid by 2028 would be monumental for the future of clean energy. But is it realistic? Some experts are highly doubtful of this. Unless Helion has kept it quiet, the company still hasn't achieved what is known as scientific net energy gain, which is when more energy is produced from fusion than what was needed to trigger the reactions. And secondly, even if they were able to do this, Jessica Lovering of the Good Energy Collective questions whether they could create a consistent, safe and affordable form of energy that would actually be ready for the grid. The jury seems out on this one as of yet. But Sam Altman, who's invested $375 million in the startup, has put his money where his mouth is, remaining optimistic about this possibility, and also stated at Davos this month that a fusion energy breakthrough would be necessary to power the current AI revolution. So Helion might be most likely to make it into the energy mix by the 2030s, but where else is the world making progress? The Oxford-based jet that smashed the record for the amount of energy created by a fusion reactor in 2022 announced last month that it will be decommissioned. However, it's been a crucial test site for the $22 billion International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, being built near the quaint French town of saint paul les dorance The construction of this international project is expected to be completed by 2025. Elsewhere in Oxford, a £12 million multi-institutional project funded by First Light Fusion, a UK research and innovations prosperity partnership scheme, 
We'll explore new ways of creating fusion power in order to accelerate the production of safe, clean and abundant fusion-based energy. Another organization in collaboration with ITA is the Japanese telecom giant NTT, who have repurposed an AI tool used to monitor telco networks to predict anomalies in the ITA fusion reactor, with hopes that this might prevent equipment failure. In the United States, following on from its successful scientific net energy gain reported in 2022, the National Ignition Facility, the current flagship for American fusion, now reports that it can produce this remarkable feat over and over. And in April 2023, the Russian T-15 MD Tokamak achieved its first stable plasma operation at the Kurchatov Institute, following multiple upgrades of the machine concluded in 2021. So now we've seen some of the most important areas of recent progress in nuclear fusion, but we can't understand the field's current state without understanding the challenges. The first challenge involves the physics of plasmas, the state of matter needed for fusion. Most of our understanding of plasma comes from computer simulations, so it's possible that when tested in a fusion reactor, it could behave differently, potentially causing equipment failure from sudden extreme temperatures. Then there are the engineering challenges, such as the need to develop materials that can cope with the extreme heat of fusion reactions for decades at a time, in order to make the energy commercially viable. For example, helium ions can have the effect of making materials like tungsten brittle. Then there is the issue of tritium, a radioactive hydrogen isotope used to create fusion. The global supply of tritium is limited and there are definite questions over whether the supply is abundant enough to provide for future generations as global reserves are expected to peak in 2027. All of these challenges discussed are very real, but they all effectively lead to one overarching challenge, that being the task of extracting energy from fusion to provide enough electric power to avoid the worst effects of climate change. As Dennis White, co-founder of Commonwealth Fusion, said in a 2022 MIT article, the biggest pressing thing is, can you have this ready in time to be impactful around climate change? The biggest risk is not getting there in time. The fusion industry then is fast moving, but certainly has its work cut out. This is definitely one to watch in the next five years. Hi, I'm trying to crowdfund at the moment to move this channel on into a better, more useful product. If you'd like to support Knowledge Brief, I've attached a PayPal link in the description. Thanks and more to come.